Time now for the morning rush. Lawmakers are heading back to Santa Fe today for a special session. Lawmakers passed a $50.4 million spending bill, but Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham said lawmakers were not transparent enough on where that money would go. Now they want to take another go at it. Lawmakers say they've worked during the off season to get the bill finalized and ready to go. Plastic bags will be coming back to Albuquerque retail locations. The Albuquerque City Council's attempt to override the mayor's veto of the repeal of the Clean and Green Retail Ordinance passed last night on a 6-3 to three vote. In the meantime, City Council's attempt to override a separate veto failed. Last week, Councilors sent a resolution to the mayor's desk that would set a policy that no city employee would be required to provide proof of COVID-19 vaccination. The mayor vetoed that resolution. Last night, City Councilors failed to override it. While well, Santa Fe National Forest officials are reminding New Mexicans that cannabis is not allowed on federal land and breaking that law can lead to a $5,000 fine. Marijuana is still illegal at the federal level and prohibited on federal land. Erica. And here's a look at the school day forecast. Temps in the mid-40s needing the light jackets this morning. By the afternoon, it's going to be very warm but very, very windy. We are getting a better look at the case of a four-year-old who repeatedly wound up back in the home of a man he reported for abusing him. Four-year-old James Dunkley told CYFD caseworkers that he was being physically and sexually abused by his mother's different boyfriends. After being put back in her care, he was eventually beaten to death. Colorado has approved a new law reaffirming a woman's right to abortion. De Democratic Governor Jared Polis signed the Re Reproductive Health Equity Act. It aims to protect a woman's reproductive choice and to protect doctors and providers from the threat of prison. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's Supreme Court nomination is officially heading for a full Senate vote as early as this week. The Senate Judiciary Committee voting along party lines yesterday deadlocked on Jackson's Supreme Court nomination, resulting in a discharge motion. Political analysts expect Jackson to go from judge to justice relatively smoothly. One Albuquerque neighborhood is voicing their frustrations with street racers. Neighbors near 98th and Dennis Chavez say around 100 drivers are taken to the intersection almost every Saturday night. AVD is prioritizing cracking down on street racers. But they have not said specifically how they plan to address this intersection. Erica. And here's a look at our threat index. We'll see strong winds today. Expect some wind damage and even low visibility with flying dust over the roads. Please from the community continue for the city to make central near the biopark area safer following a hit and run that killed a seven year old boy. Georgia O'Keeffe Elementary School's PTA President Jeannie Humphrey wants city councilors to evaluate the area near the biopark and make it safer for pedestrians. City officials say that there are plans in place. Ukrainian President Zelensky will tell the United Nations Security Council about the, what he saw in the town of Buka. Zelensky says more than 300 people were killed and tortured before for Russian forces were driven out, all civilians. The U.S. has already had several sanctions against Russia. Bernalillo County will be holding a rapid hire job fair today. People can apply and interview on the spot. Well, there are jobs available in multiple departments. That's happening from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the South Valley Multipurpose Senior Center. Erica. All right, here's a look at the morning drive. The maps are looking clear. And here's a check on tracker going east on I-40 near the Big Eye. Nothing slowing us down in that area as of now. A disabled veteran's hunt for a house has come to an end thanks to a nonprofit group. The nonprofit group Homes for Our Troops has gifted the Navy veteran Joel Booth a brand new custom built home. Booth says he can now focus more on doing things he wants and not worry about accessibility. Time now for the five facts. At number five happening today, Bernalillo County will be holding a rapid hire job fair. People can apply and interview on the spot. There are several jobs available in many departments, including behavioral health. Human Resources and MDC. They're also looking to fill brand new positions at the Tiny Home Village. That's happening from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the South Valley Multipurpose Senior Center. Number four, one Albuquerque neighborhood is voicing their frustrations with street racers taking over their streets. Neighbors near 98th and Dennis Chavez say around 100 drivers are taken to the intersection almost every Saturday night. They also say they're concerned because some of the street racers fire handguns during their antics. APD says they are prioritizing cracking down on street racers but they have not said how they plan to address this intersection. And in number three, it's going to be a windy day, and those winds will start picking up after 11 this morning, staying strongest through the afternoon with gusts up to 50 in the metro. On to number two now. This morning, lawmakers are heading back up to Santa Fe for a special session. Lawmakers passed a $50.4 million spending bill. However, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham said that lawmakers were not transparent enough as to where that money would go. Now they want to take another go at it. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle say that they've worked during the off season to get the bill finalized. 
They also say they're ready to go today, so much so they say they want to figure out a way to also help New Mexicans pay for the rising price of gas. Lawmakers say the special session should be wrapped up by midnight tonight. And at number one, we are getting a better look at the case of a four-year-old who repeatedly wound up back in the home of a man he reported for abusing him. Four-year-old James Dunkley told CYFD caseworkers that he was being physically and sexually abused by his mother's different boyfriends. After being put back in her care, he was eventually beaten to death. Now, two years after his death in December of 2019, CYFD finally released its own investigation into his death, and it shows they knew a lot. Police arrested Zarek Matkes, who was not supposed to be taking care of the boy. In a statement, CYFD says in part that instead of focusing on blame, they are looking at processes and procedures to minimize child fatalities in New Mexico.